I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Heavenly Father, we thank you. And we acknowledge you on this day. Father God, some people uh, remember 9-11, way back when, when there was a catastrophe, but we declare and declare that this day, this day is a good day. This day is a great day. This day is a day of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's the day of the Lord, and we're not going to be sorrowful. We're going to uh, pray for those who've lost loved ones and those who were, you know, part of the catastrophe. But we're thankful and we're grateful for our God. He is a good God, a great God, a mighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We are on the land of the living. And for this, we're grateful. We thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are great, God. You are good, God. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallowed be thy name. We worship you, Jesus.
hallelujah. Yes, the glory belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. The glory belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. The glory belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, we welcome you to our Global Life Church and we pray that all's going well with you. And I'm Apostle Oral Hazel. Uh, we are streaming live today on Zoom and also on uh, Faith to Facebook. Amen. And we trust that you've been blessed by the worship thus far. And then I'd like to bring to you uh, the word of God today. Amen. Coming to you. Amen. From uh, Proverbs 2, 6 to 7, uh, those are global life, as I said, the notes out. Okay, and you can look at your notes. I think I believe I have the notes up on, uh, on the, the Zoom link, and you can follow us. Okay? Uh, so today we're going to talk about divine intel, divine intelligence. In, in the time in which we are living, we really need divine intelligence in our personal lives uh, to deal with our husbands, our wives, our children, our children's children. We need divine intel in our government. We need divine intel in the church. We need divine intel in the body of Christ. We need divine intel in our personal businesses. We need divine intel in our islands, life, in our nation's life. And so wherever you are, I pray that you will call a friend, let them know that today we are talking about divine intelligence. If you're watching us on Facebook, just share, 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 share the word and, and, and just throw a party. But we're talking about divine intelligence. And this is a time to receive divine intelligence. In Proverbs chapter two, six to seven in the King James Version, it says, if you can see, you can read along with me. <clears throat> For the Lord gives wisdom right out of the gate. Here is God saying, concerning wisdom. For the Lord gives wisdom. So therefore, if you are lacking wisdom, what should you do? You got to turn to God and give out a clarion call and say, God, I need wisdom. I believe that every Christian needs wisdom. Where can we find wisdom? We find wisdom in the word of God. I believe if we read the word of God uh, and study the word of God, uh, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and, and a light unto our pathway. That's wisdom speaking, and that's God speaking out of his word. Proverbs 2, 6 to 7, 4, the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. I tell you, this is a sealer moment in Proverbs 2, six to seven, uh, that's a sermon all by itself. And we, meet, we need wisdom more than ever in these last days as a son and a daughter of God. When everything is going haywire, when everything is going topsy-turvy, do you know is we are supposed to be the ones, the believers, should be the one to turn this physical world upside down with the wisdom of God. We saw wisdom of God display in the lives of men like Solomon and David, Nebuchadnezzar, and men like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, men like uh, David. I tell you, and so therefore we need that kind of wisdom. Somebody can shout and say, I, I need the God kind of wisdom. Or you can shout and say, I need the Bible kind of wisdom today. And so therefore we can pray for wisdom. I tell you, this is a serious endeavor. We must pray. That's why men are always to pray. 
You know, you can pray for wisdom. If you lack of wisdom, you ask God. James 1, 5 says, if any of you lacks of wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. And so that's God's word concerning wisdom. Pray. Right now, I say, God, give me wisdom. I can't hear you. Somebody say, God, give me wisdom. Wisdom. I need wisdom to live in these last days. Wisdom will cause you to stand up in the, uh, uh, like saw and stand up and stand out in the midst of the rough and rumble tumble. Young people, you need wisdom to, to be a compass in your life. The middle age, you need wisdom in your life. The seniors, we need wisdom even more. Somebody say a prayer, say, God, give me wisdom. Lord, as I preach and teach about this topic today, God, give me wisdom. I need it. I tell you, somebody can tweet out the link and say, come on, we are talking about wisdom. God, give me wisdom. And he says, if you ask him, he's going to give it to you. He's not going to upbraid you. He's not going to just give you piecemeal. But if you ask for wisdom, he is going to uh, give it to you. And we're talking about when we pray in tongues, when we pray in our prayer language, it helps us to receive divine wisdom. We need, in this particular time, divine wisdom. We just can't be walking through life as a simple tongue. Lord, don't make me simple. Lord, wire me with your supernatural divine wisdom. And somebody say, God, I mean it. I tell you, wisdom is what's lacking in our lives. But do you know, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you are downloading in your spirit divine wisdom. Somebody shout and say, God, give me wisdom. I need wisdom to deal with my husband, wisdom to deal with my wife, wisdom to deal with my business, wisdom to deal with my governmental affairs, well, wisdom to deal with my affairs. Wisdom to deal with uh, the dark secrets in my life. Oh, wisdom to assist me in getting out. Lord, I need wisdom for my economic situation, my financial situation. God, give me wisdom. I need wisdom for this medical situation I'm going through. You ask wisdom, bam, he, he drops healing upon you. That's the God kind of wisdom. And so I believe that as I preach and teach the word of God, he's going to give you insight and revelation and what to do. The wisdom of God will be revealed, will be unleashed in your life today. Proverbs 16, 16 tells us how much better to get wisdom than gold. Everybody say, give me my gold, give me now. But uh, Proverbs, uh, written by the great Solomon, King Solomon says, how much better to get wisdom when Solomon came out of the gate to rule uh, the Hebrew people, the children of Israel. God asked him, what do you need? He said, God, <laughs> I don't need money or anything. I need an understanding heart. And uh, then when uh, he, he asked God to give him wisdom, then uh, you need wisdom uh, to count your gold back. And then God dropped wisdom upon him. And then in Solomon's time, listen to me, prime minister, listen to me, kings, listen to me, governors and commissioners and senators, ask God for wisdom. You don't have to go to somebody with a rabbit's foot to win an election and mess up your nation, mess up your country. I'm calling our politicians back to God during this electoral system, all kind of divination and wicked spirits are released within our families, our islands, and our nation. But come on, let's go back to Proverbs. Let's go back to King Solomon in Psalm 16, 16. He says, how much better to get wisdom than gold is better. Come on, somebody help me preach and say, it's better to get wisdom than gold. Somebody write on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, some place and say it is much better 
to get wisdom than gold. Sila, that's what Solomon said. So therefore, let, let us pause and say, God, I need wisdom like Solomon. I need uh, understanding to walk um, in this day. I need, he said, I need your wisdom to guide my people. Men, you need wisdom to guide your family. Women, you need wisdom to guide your family. There are some single uh, women, you need wisdom to guide your children so they, do, they don't become a dropout in the community and science. Somebody shout and say, God, give me this divine wisdom, this divine wisdom, and this uh, supernatural wisdom is, is better than gold. But once you got to the God kind of wisdom, it's going to teach you how you're not, you're not counting money. You're going to be counting and you're going to be weighing your gold back. That's what wisdom will do uh, for you, take you in a whole new trajectory. Yeah, wisdom will take you into a whole new dimension. Somebody better show say, God, give me your wisdom. I'm tired of of this level, I'm sitting on this level, and you got a top level for me. You you got supernatural level. You got I mean heavenly level. We're not shooting at the moon. We are we are going for supernatural and divine intel. We need divine intelligence during these days. I've, I've gone to a lot of different meetings with government officials. I don't know thing about politics. Never studied politics, but when you sit down the divine intel begins to flow. I tell you, I've sat down with police chiefs, commissioners, politicians, and when you sit down, divine intel begins to flow. Come on, somebody say, I need divine intel. God's wisdom is unmatchable. No, the, the demonic wisdom cannot match it. So why am I going to the demonic workers? God's wisdom is perfect. I tell you, uh, with God, with, with uh, this ability to deliver you from trouble, God's wisdom will deliver you from trouble. Even trouble you brought upon yourself. You might be a believer, a Christian, but sometimes we put ourselves and we trespass against God's will and our laws. And you say, God, give me wisdom to get out of this trouble that I brought upon upon myself. I tell you, when people put problems upon themselves, they defect from God, they drop out of church, they curse the pastors, curse the bishops, curse the believers. You don't know what's happening up in the church, but all you got to say, if you lack wisdom to live your life, hallelujah, to get your money, get your honey, get your husband, your own husband, your own wife, your own children, your own business, I tell you, you don't have to blow nose. Once you can open your mouth and say, God, like Solomon, give me wisdom. Somebody shout and say, God, give me wisdom. I feel God as I'm preaching from my home. Drop wisdom in our homes today. Wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is a commandment in Matthew 10 and in verse 16. Somebody write that. Matthew 10, 16. Here where it says, be wise as a serpent. Wisdom is a not uh, an opinion for your life. It's a requirement. Wisdom. Put that out. Write that again. Wisdom is not an opinion from God. But wisdom is a requirement. Lord God, I need that wisdom requirement down Oh, drop scrolls, drop scrolls, drop manifestos, drop wisdom scrolls, cause us to write out stuff after this, cause us to be prophetic in wisdom. I feel God like I'm in global at church this morning preaching, but we are at home because of this inclement weather, but we can still revelate, we can still have a revival, we can still have have a rumble. Woo, I tell you, watch out. 
Mm -hmm. So wisdom is not an option, young man. Wisdom is not, hallelujah, an option, young woman. Ah, husband, wisdom is not an option how to deal with your wife, how to romance your wife. Ask God for wisdom. You, wisdom is not an option how you can get your financial world back in order. Just some shouting, say, God, give me wisdom while the apostle is preaching and teaching. Wisdom is the vehicle for getting you to the place you want to go. Wisdom is this vehicle. Would you jump into this? I'll call it a, a Rolls Royce for now. Oh, I'm me back. Uh, the donkey cart is over. Horse cart is over. Chariots are over. But wisdom, jump into this uh, heavenly vehicle. Wisdom, bro. jump into this. Uh, I tell you, Ezekiel saw chariots. Allah, yeah, yeah. Elijah shot chariots. So God caused me to jump in one of those fiery chariots of wisdom. And that's kind of better. Wisdom is a vehicle for getting you to the place you want to go. Where do you want to go? Do you want to get married? Do you want a wife? Do you want a husband? Do you want to go back to school? Um, do you want to purchase your land? Do you want to purchase your house? Do you want to purchase your, new, your brand new car? Do you want to travel? Do you want to spread the gospel? Do you want to preach and revelate better? So you, we all got to jump into, hallelujah, this vehicle of wisdom. Do you want to prophesy on target and jump in this vehicle of wisdom? Come on, by, by faith, jump in. God, by faith, I jump into this vehicle you have provided of wisdom. And Lord God, I close my eyes and in my imagery, my imagination that you have given me, I am soaring like lightning speed order to get to the place where wisdom wants me to get before this year is out. And I shout, I am going to end this year strong. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. Miriam Webster uh, definition for wisdom, the ability to discern inequalities and relationships you need it you know sometimes when people say hey she's not the one he's not the one uh, you got the ability on the inside of you ability to discern somebody say god give me the ability to discern the inequalities and relationships good sense christians we need some good common sense judgment we need a wise attitude, and I'll jump in there, a wise altitude. Belief, our course of action. You might say it, it this way. Wisdom is a God-given ability to help you shape uh, your attitudes, shape your words. I'll try and shape your world. What kind of world do you want to live in? You want to live in the dumps? I see Christians want to live a stressed out life. I see Christians want to live a sinned out, bummed out life. <laughs> oh, what God's call wisdom is calling the believers to a higher place of prayer, praise, worship, and intercession. I tell you, I feel God. We just might have revival breaking out in our homes today. Somebody shout, somebody dance in your bedroom, bathroom, someplace. I feel God as I revelate. So wisdom is a God-given ability to help shape our attitudes, our words, our worlds, and action. Some questions, any kind of word jumps out of their mouth. But somebody who wants to speak, who wants to speak life, they will check in with wisdom first. They will uh, check in with a scripture they memorize first. They will check in with praying in the spirit first before they come back with some diatribe and some begrimed and grimy dark words. <laughs> Ah, Christians can show off and show that they can curse too. But Lord, I'm preaching. Lord, I'm importuning. We are the Christians who want to beat themselves with wisdom, put wisdom upon their mind. 
wisdom upon their soul, wisdom upon their spirit. Somebody should say, God, give me wisdom to change my altitude, my attitude, my words, my, my world, my belief system, and my action. I mean, that right there is, is a sermon. Wisdom is the God-given ability to perceive the true nature of a matter and to implement the will of God in that matter. Wisdom, again, is the God-given ability. Somebody shall say, God, give me that ability. I need wisdom. Hallelujah, concerning about everything. Wisdom is the God-given ability to perceive the true nature of a matter. And if you're a son or a daughter, uh, your, your wisdom stirs up on the inside of you through the spirit and say, uh, and, and you discern the matter, but some people just close down wisdom in them and they walk into territory and they trespass against God's word and his laws and they walk into situation, hallelujah, but wisdom can get you out. Somebody shout and say, wisdom, get me out. Oh my God, I wish I was at church. I might be running around some chairs right now. Somebody say, wisdom, get me out. Wisdom, find me a way out. Wisdom, this ain't it. Wisdom, get me up off my duff. Wisdom, I need to run. Wisdom, I need supernatural activity. My mind and my body is telling me to give up, but I need wisdom in my mind, wisdom in my soul, wisdom in my spirit. I need wisdom in my hands, wisdom in my fingers, wisdom on my feet. Wisdom on my toes. And when I get up, wisdom, I don't want to run like other times. I want to run like David ran to the Goliath and slay my Goliath with that wisdom stone. I see somebody with getting up with their wisdom stone in their swing and say, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being spat upon by demons. I'm tired of sitting upon by demonic spirits. I'm tired of being tired, complaining and fussing. But I'm getting up because wisdom, as the man of God preached, wisdom is getting hold of me. Somebody type out there and say, I feel glory up in my house. Watch out if glory drop. I don't know what's going to happen. But I feel a movement of wisdom, even in my home, dropping upon my wife, dropping upon my daughter, dropping upon my grandchildren, dropping her. Oh, come on, somebody send wisdom and say, wisdom do what I can do. Uh, we are talking about divine intel. Divine intel can come through an angel. Daniel had uh, divine intel showed up. Hallelujah, manifested and said, man, when you pray and release that wisdom prayer, I've been up here battling for 21 days, but I've broken so who will send wisdom to their sons, who will send wisdom to their daughters, who will send wisdom to their wives, who will send wisdom to their husbands, who will send wisdom to their next door neighbors, who will send wisdom to their co-workers, who will send wisdom to the hospital bed who will send wisdom over an island, who will send wisdom over a nation. Ah, somebody better be dancing and shouting the victory. Somebody say, I'm going to let wisdom work for me. And James, the apostle of a practical faith, he offered this instructions. He says, in, in James 1, 5, verse, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. James 1, 5, and 6. You need to meditate on James 1, 5, and 6. Somebody write it here on YouTube, write it on Facebook, write it on LinkedIn, write it on Instagram, write it. 
James 1, 5 and 6. So you can pray. Hallelujah. Prayer. Praying in the spirit and knocks. Is this divine wisdom? So if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Ask God. Come on, I send the notes out on the line. God, I'm asking you for wisdom. The children of God, we need wisdom. The Greek word for wisdom. In this word, in this verse is Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A. And so according to the Greek um, lexicon, it says wisdom means <clears throat> broad and full intelligence. This is like a broad band, broad with wisdom everywhere. People can look at you and see your wisdom man, wisdom woman. Broad and full of intelligence. Somebody confess and say, I am broad and filled with intelligence. Used of the knowledge of a very diverse matter. Supreme intelligence. Somebody say, I'm connected. And I've got up to God. And I have supreme intelligence. I can't hear you. Somebody say, I am connected to God and I have supreme intelligence such as belongs to God. Every Christian, we have access to this supreme intelligence, this divine intel. And James says, the apostle James says, ask God, pray for wisdom. <clears throat> Who then is wise? In Romans 16, 27, in the King James Version, it says, to God only wise, read it with me. You see, people are going and looking for wisdom in all the, <coughs> sorry, the wrong places. To God only wise. God is the only wisdom person, wisdom intelligence. To God only wise, be glory to, to Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Only God has wisdom. He alone is the source of all wisdom. Supernatural wisdoms come only from God. God has the wisdom you need for your situation that you're going through to. Will you come off of pause? Open your mouth and say, God, give me divine intel. Give me divine intelligence. <clears throat> Hallelujah. When you have divine intel, when you have divine wisdom, you are tapping into prophetic intelligence. You, you, you begin to become, know, know it. Before you get into it, you know it. Like when Jesus saw his disciples, he said, I saw you under the, the, the fig tree. I saw you. I, I tell you, blow their minds. Hallelujah. <clears throat> when you have divine intel, when you have divine wisdom, you are tapping into prophetic intelligence. I tell you, and God wants some sons of Issachar, daughters of Issachar to arise. Will you arise and stop being a simpleton? The enemy wants us to just be a simpleton. But in the kingdom, we need some people to rumble with the wisdom of God when you show up on the scene and your job, the first person, your boss is coming to give a raise and to ask a question. It's you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. And so, Father, we, we, we need divine intel, revelation knowledge. We need divine knowledge about issues you know nothing about in the physical realm, but because you're tapping into the supernatural realm, the, the divine wisdom is flowing. Hallelujah. You can receive divine wisdom, divine intel today about circumstances, situations, problems you have never encountered before, problems you got yourself in, and God is offering this divine wisdom freely, freely, freely. Will you, you put your hands up and say, God, I need this divine wisdom. Listen, when you're praying the Holy Spirit, you are downloading scrolls of divine wisdom. God is giving us insight how to pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Spirit. Lord, 
God, we got to stop dumbing down the Holy Spirit. I wish we could all jump in and, and begin to practice praying in the Spirit. There was a time in the Word of Faith movement when men like Kenneth Hagen were around, or Robert Sumo around. I tell you, people prayed in the Spirit. They weren't going to therapists and psychiatrists. They were tapping into, Lord, I beg you, I plead with you, let us get back to spend some time in private, in public, in our cars, at home, and our business, spend five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and let us pray in the Holy Spirit. And divine wisdom will be available to you. So when you get yourself in a jam, that divine wisdom will flow. This is a season to tap into wisdom that is from above. This is a season to tap into the God kind of wisdom. This is a season to tap into the God kind of wisdom that never fails. This is a time to tap into God's wisdom, hallelujah, that would never miss a target you will hit bullseye if you got my notes i got a bullseye you will hit the bullseye 100 percent of the time and so therefore there is a differentiation between divine wisdom and demonic wisdom but god wants us to leave the demonic wisdom behind and run into the wisdom of god james 3 17 says but the wisdom that is from above is first pure and then peaceable gentle willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. James 3.17. That's all about Christian. Let me read one more time. Stick with me. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. That's how a Christian should walk in purity. And then, then peaceable. Too many Christians walk in a disheveled mindset. Put your, your mind at peace. Somebody always want to get somebody. I like to beat down somebody. But I will beat down somebody in the church, outside of the church. This rat race. Well, when we get the wisdom of God, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then the peaceable. God, give me that peaceable spirit. And then it is gentle. It is willing to yield to another brother or sister, full of mercy. It is filled with good fruits. Lord, we need some good fruits and some Christians. And without partiality, this wisdom that's from above, it no partiality. And without hypocrisy, people are hypocritical. I mean, in their family, they will kiss their wives today and divorce them uh, as soon as they come down from the altar. Uh, they, they will tell them, oh, I love you and praise you and disappoint you when night comes. Ah, uh, somebody said, mm -hmm. but James 3, 17, somebody write that down and say, meditate upon it. Have a seal moment. This is the wisdom we are to walk in as believers so walk in it this is the wisdom we are to display as christians so therefore display it be a light and a beacon in the earth be salt be light of wisdom and we're going to see people coming into the house of god coming not only in the house but coming in the kingdom of god i think we're, we are selling ourselves hallelujah for zero but god wants us to up the gold ephesians 5 17 says therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of god is you need to understand what the will of the lord is in the matters you are facing now what is the will of god and you can know the will of god by just spending some time praying in the spirit calming your mind Calm in your spirit, because when that thing, when that Goliath comes, it looks tall, it looks big, it looks like it weighs more than you, and it looks like if I send a, a, a David rocket, it, it might miss. But listen, when you got the God kind of wisdom, 
and you're praying the spirit, it releases the, the, the rock doesn't miss. It hits the target, hallelujah, to inform principalities and powers and demonic forces that are working against you. Somebody showed us that we need divine intel in this day. Ephesians 5, 15, 16 says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We need divine intel for these evil days. We need divine intel for these confused days. Too much Christians are confused. Too much Christians are on pause. Too many uh, Christians are discombobulated in their minds, body, soul, and spirit. I pray that as I teach and preach about uh, wisdom, this divine intel that angels would jump up in your house and deliver you. I pray that I preach and I pray that the blood of Jesus as filled with the wisdom of Jesus would drop upon your mind and your eyes and open your eyes. I pray that God, God, Lord, would cause you to prophesy all day. He can cause a donkey, Balaam's donkey can to prophesy. Let the spirit of prophecy drop upon those who would hear the ending of this divine intel sermon and teaching and let them prophesy like they've never prophesied before. Let them pray like they've never prayed before. Let them preach like they have never preached before. Let them revelate like they have never revelate before. Let them give their lives totally to God like they have never given their lives to God. So we need divine intel as I come to a close for divine, uh, if we're, for in these evil days, we need divine intel for these evil days. We need divine intelligence for these confused and discombobulated days. We need divine intel for these apathetic days. Apathetic, go we'll find a, a, a dictionary and look over apathetic, A-P-A-T-H-E-T-I-C. Uh, the enemy wants to uh, cause the believers to be apathetic, to be lazy, to be unconcerned, but uh -huh, unconcerned about the things of God, but not unconcerned about going, about going shopping, not going, not being unconcerned about going on your job, so you could put a little piece of muscle of bread, but listen, we got to come back to the house of God to eat the bread of life. I'm preaching, praying, and crying, because I know what's coming up in this world, and we're going to need the wisdom, and when we're running to the house of God, I will not be here, I'll be gone, so before I go, I'll catch up, caught up. I'm dropping wisdom for the believer, wisdom for the unbeliever. Unbelievers, you need wisdom. Christians and disciples of God, you need more wisdom like you have never done before. How many times the enemy is talking in your mind to do something crazy? Build a noose, kill your husband, destroy your marriage. I mean, talk to your children. Stop praying for uh, um, the elders, all kind of stuff. The enemy is putting us here, year and yon. Oh, but God is God. I feel like this message is speaking to God's people who tuned in, who are listening in, and said, This is a, a divine intel. I mean, so many where God is dropping down scrolls, dropping down revelation, dropping down your insight, dropping down um, our wisdom information. And it, I need to do right now after this sermon. I'm gonna listen to it again. I might have missed some time catching it in between, but I need this divine intelligence that comes from God. And so as I rest my case in Job 28, 27. 28, uh, Job, somebody write it for me. Job 28, 27 to 28 says, God makes his wisdom available to you today. Will you take it? God is making his wisdom available to you. Will you take it? Will you shun it? <clears throat> Will you turn me off? Will you go to another web page, another YouTube page, another Instagram page, another LinkedIn page. I would say, Lord, I'm going to stay until he is done. But Job 28, 27 to 28 says, 
if you have my notes, the, the believers at Global Life Church, it says, he knows where wisdom is. God knows where he stores up wisdom. He knows where his library of wisdom located in heaven, libraries. He knows where his books filled with wisdom for your life, for this age, this last days, where they're located. And you just ask for it. Angel just go in and bow that book and bring it down to you. Drop it in your spirit. He knows where wisdom is and declares it to all who will listen. He established it and examined it thoroughly. He's examined it thoroughly. And God is like the wisdom doctor, 28. And this is what he says to all mankind. Uh, look, this and this is what God is saying to all mankind. Uh, look, to fear the Lord is true wisdom. Look, to fear the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. Sila. I rest my case. I can say more, but I, I believe you, you, you were toggling along with me for a while. So, Father, I just release a prayer. In the name of Jesus, I release a prayer right now. In the name of Jesus, I release a prayer. In the name of Jesus. I release, I release, I release, I release a prayer in the name and the blood of Jesus. I release it, I release it in the name and the blood of Jesus. I release a prayer for God's people in the name and the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to God. Mm. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I release. I release prayers for God's people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Touch your people. Bring blessed to the signs, wonders, and miracles fall upon your people. Those on this Zoom call, those, Lord God, who are listening via um, all the streaming links, we are streaming out now. Let wisdom speak. I sense an anointing. I sense wisdom scrolls dropping down everywhere in our houses. Wisdom scroll dropping down in our churches. Lord God, let your wisdom multiply in our heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Cause us never, never to be the same after this sermon uh, at Global Life Church, uh, the church where we attend. Let signs and wonders in the area of wisdom break forth in our lives. In Jesus' name, Lord, we give you glory and we give you praise. And somebody say hallelujah. And so we thank um, those who are watching us on uh, all the streaming areas, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. Thank you for um, being here with us. And, and as we end, we pray that God would heal you. We pray that God would save you. And if you need to be saved, say, Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord and master of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and you'd like to support hallelujah, this movement at Global Life Church, you can send in, if you have a PayPal, you can send it in, hallelujah, via PayPal, uh, paypal.me backslash global life church. Uh, you can send it in, the believers, if you have a PayPal account, I believe everybody at Global Life Church should need a, a PayPal account. Uh, we got a bit of uh, tech, tech givers in this time. If you don't know how to start it, let me know. <clears throat> but we have to be technical givers. You release it. And boom, it drops into the offering plate. And boom, God begins to work for you. So these are the times we can't resist it. We see uh, we had inclement weather all yesterday. I mean, today the sun is shining, but we are preaching God. Amen. I mean, it rained all day, all night. And we just decided to stay in our homes. I pass to give everybody a break, a little rest. Some people came up. Some people are listening on Facebook. Hallelujah. God give you a rest, a restoration. 
and refreshing in the area of wisdom. So God bless you. And we love you. And on the streaming, we're going to start the streaming now. Stream it online. All the believers are in global.